Well, there are new tools which have come up called such as marker assisted selection uh, for the last uh, 10 years more or less. Uh, so, so the advantage if you have good markers for a certain trait or let's say resistance to UG99, some of the genes which give you resistance to UG99. So instead of growing plants in the field and have UG99 attack that field and inf infest that field, uh, if you can take a small DNA from a little bit of leaf, you can uh, then uh, in the lab check whether that marker is present or not. I was showing you marker pseudo black chaff. We say it's a morphological marker. So you can see while you are selecting, but DNA marker you have to run in the lab. So based on that, if you, you can very quickly know these plants will have that gene. So that works if, if you only want to focus on one or two things at a time. Uh, like I want to just breed for UG99 resistance and that's the gene I want to put in. And for there are other genes for which we don't have good markers. And you still want to maintain a much broader genetic diversity. So, so we are not yet at that level that you could say you do marker assisted selection because most people will end up selecting same few genes and that could lead to much bigger disaster. So, so, so they, then nowadays there is another uh, approach is being uh, applied uh, at this stage I will say in wheat very much as an experiment to see how it's going to work or not is to look across the wheat genome, across all chromosome and you associate uh, all the markers present on the chromosome to a trait or, uh, or multiple traits, so, uh, which is called genomic selection. So that can, based on uh, algorithms which you write uh, or models you develop, you can start to predict how this plant will look like uh, if you advance and get their progeny, what it might carry and what it might uh, may not end up carrying. So once you have predicted, you don't have to wait for these six generations of selection. You may want to intermate them right at this early generation without testing, just knowing the DNA sequence. You can say, okay, this one is good for all this, but is missing out, let's say, yellow rust resistance genes. So I can intermate here based on prediction model so I can start to breed my materials faster. But we are not there yet. It's very much at experimental phase and we want to try out on a large scale to see how will it work. On top of that, how much it's going to cost you and how much extra benefit you will get out of it. Because uh, in places where let's say it's easier to grow plant and select, uh, you have lots of disease may be easier just go and select in the field. But for characters which are you don't see, for example, quality, yield, they look like yielding but they may not yield when you put them as a bigger plot, uh, which are, we call very complex trait. This genomic selection strategy is bringing a new possibility to, to uh, enhance your selection process and maybe uh, able to pick. To me, it says maybe you can pick your parents much better that way to decide which two sh we should intermine. Uh, uh, because if you start with uh, the best possible parental combination, that gives you also much higher probability that the progenies which you are seeing here of uh, one of the progeny out of that parental combination will be the superstar. And, and, and that's the kind of thing uh, I'm looking uh, in genomic selection. 
and and some and so you combine with the uh, uh, genomic selection approaches with the what we have the still the eyes are very important and the fields are important with the conventional plant breeding approaches so we need to bring the two approaches in a more integrated manner to get get the best out of the two not one versus other that has never worked and is the is bringing different disciplines different approaches together as one approach is going to give probably the much better variety